Hello, everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Loudly, we hail. Another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on proudly we hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bancroft. Our play is entitled Border Incident. The time today. The scene, a lonely mountain range behind the Iron Curtain. The story, a tale of a thrilling rescue and a race to safety. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this important message. Here's a word to the young women of America. Have you heard about the excellent opportunities for advancement in the expanding Women's Army Corps? Enterprising young women who can qualify are urged to enlist now. Every day, more young women are finding out the details about job openings in the Women's Army Corps. So visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. Have a talk with the recruiting sergeant. Get all the facts. You'll be glad to give them to you. Volunteer for the WAC today. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production... Border incident. It was a small, stuffy, high ceiling office in a building filled with many offices that were small and stuffy and high ceiling. Located in a quarter of Paris where everything had a nondescript look, it bore an air of dull, tired, down-at-the-heels respectability. It was not the sort of place you'd expect to find Stefan Donner, the noted pianist and composer. But then, Donner was a mystery in the minds of most who knew him. What could you say about a man who made music that captivated audiences everywhere? A man whose fingers breathed life and soul into piano, but whose heart and mind were cold as ice seemed to have no compassion for anything. What could you say about a man who chose no sides and performed for East and West of us? It was well that only a handful of people knew the real truth behind the movements of Stefan Donner. For had it been known any more widely, his life wouldn't have been worth a steel tooth in Siberia. Uh, you're late. You're lucky I'm here at all. You know I leave tonight. Uh, this is Luke. Luke Donner. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Can't we open a window? The only way you'll get one of those to open is to break it. Uh, I always enjoy doing business in a state. Yeah, sit down, Stephen. Have a cigarette. Relax. He's a cute fellow, this Richard. A fine boy. All right, let's get down to business. Recognize this man? I should hope so. Ivanov. Peter Ivanov. That's a very good picture. And uh, what do you know about him? What do I know about him? Now, stop acting like an ass. I know what everyone else knows about him. One of their big wigs, militant. Wouldn't mind going to war with us tomorrow. The truth is a little different. He's one of our people. Been one for over 20 years. Except for one or two others, he was our most important link. You said he was. They got him? <laughs> Not exactly. They found out about him, but evidently he had warning and got away. At least temporarily. Stop being so internally vague. Either he got away or he didn't. Yeah, hold the end of this, Luke. Yes. You realize that to fool them for more than 20 years, a man must have a certain amount of intelligence. Well, the old fox knew they might get on to him someday, and so he had an escape route well prepared. Now, you can imagine how much a man like this is worth to both sides. Yes, yes, I can imagine. Five days ago, Ivanov disappeared. Their press has said nothing. We know they haven't found him yet, and they're literally turning the country upside down in their search. 
Now, this is the escape route he planned here between Tinalizi and Gori. Up through here, past Kalaki, then to the river, west of Bozomi, and across the border to Kars. Yes. Now, you know a little about this area, don't you? Yes, yes. It's very mountainous and primitive and cold. And it also happens, by strange coincidence, to be the general area of your concert tour. Hmm. Now, there's a rail hub here at Lenny Nakan. Uh, you'll want to take care of it. Now, before you tell me what I'll want to do, suppose you tell me what I'm supposed to do. Ivanov's got to be somewhere along this hundred-mile escape route. If he'd had no trouble, he'd be out by now. If they'd caught him, he'd know that. They won't catch him, however, because he'll kill himself first. If he's alive, we want to help him get out. If he's dead, we want to know that. Hmm. And you have selected me to answer your little question. Mm, you and Luke. Luke will take Rink's place. Rink was never cut out for mountain climbing. Ah, go on, Richard, go on. Now, a week from now, you'll be giving a concert in Piatagort, correct? Oh. Next stop, my come. Only you're going to miss the airliner and charter a private plane. The name of the pilot will be Stenowitz. Very good boy. Then I'm sorry to say the three of you are going to meet an unfortunate end. Your plane is going to get lost and crashed right in the mountains here, here, between Tbilisi and Gori. You're such a fascinating storyteller. <laughs> Think how the world will mourn your loss. Now, let's get down to specifics. Arkov, Rostov, Krasnyoda, Piazagod. Well, you certainly lay him in the aisles, don't you? If you are going to play my servant, you might try to act like one. Oh, that's okay in public, Tavares, but I don't want to get into the habit. Well, get in the habit of being quiet, then. You know, you got to hand it to that guy, Richard. Pilot's a man named Stanovic. A very good boy. Just like that. Never ceases to amaze me. Watch the road. Slow up. There's another car check ahead. Well, that's the third since we left the city. They sure are looking for that guy, aren't they? Well, since he's probably the most important man in the world to both sides right now, you'll have to forgive them for their zeal. And for the love of Brown, try to act a little more like an English valet and not an American gangster. I was distinctly told the plane left at 10.30, and now... You tell me it left a half an hour ago. Now, that's fine. That's just wonderful. I happen to be in a hurry. Just how do you expect me to get to? Oh, what is the use? It is possible to charter a plane here. It is. Is that all you can do? Nod or shake your blockhead? Hey, ring, ring. Will you please try to converse with this positive fellow? I think it's possible to charter the plane from the manner in which he bobbed his head. Please make all the arrangements. I'm going out there where I can breathe. I am Donner. Stefan Donner. You've heard of me? No. Well, don't brag about your ignorance. My man tells me that you have a plane for hire. It's going to snow. That's not the point. Will you fly us to my top? We'll not wait till morning. There'll be an airliner then. Now, look, my good man, I don't wish to wait till morning. I am willing to pay you anything in reason. Just give me a civil answer to my question. You have to get a special clearance. They track down an old charter trip. And where does one obtain this special clearance? Over there in that building. But in the meantime, why don't you get the plane ready? Oh, it's all ready. You have to tell them who you're flying with. And who am I flying with? Tell them ten of it. Farewell, Pierre Gorsh. Next stop, the moon. You better get into those claws back there. You'll find them under the seat with the shoot. Was it difficult to manage? It wasn't easy. They've been turning everything upside down. It would seem they haven't caught him yet. Who? Oh. You don't know what the plans are? All I know is I'm to have my plane ready. A man named Donner and his servants will charter it. Between Gibelisi and Gori, we will bail out and my plane will crash. We have to have proper clothes for climbing. Beyond that, I know nothing. Well, we have got to pick up a trail and follow it. 
We hope to find the man they are turning everything upside down about. We try to get away across the border. And if we don't find him? We go out anyway. You know, this whole area in here is swarming with fruit. I know. Only the trail we've got to follow is one four mountain goats only. And whose trail is it? You tell him I want to get out of this clothes. We should be just about over our position. It's hard to tell with this kind of stuff. How high are we? Uh, 15,000. Now throttle back and head her north. Are you all ready, Luke? Ready to go. All right. We'll be landing in rugged country. Our only job tonight is to get down safely and to find a spot to hold up until we get our bearings. In this wind, we won't be landing very close together. No, we probably won't. If it's clear down there, we may be able to spot each other. If not, fly low till daylight. Remember, don't show any light. Don't shout. If we are caught, well, it's are the getting lost story. Any questions? Good. Now let's go. See if we find Comrade Ivan. Donner, get down here, you fool. Ah, oh, don't get excited. I landed on that ridge up there. I had a look around. What did you do with your shoes? I ate it. Now, look, Donner, let's get something straight. You give the orders, that's fine. But just remember, I've been in this business a long time, too. This isn't the first time I've been dropped out of a plane into the middle of nowhere. I know what I'm doing, especially in this kind of work. Stanovich landed down there. How do you know? Oh, I saw where he fell. I landed first. I could see you both, at least your shoes. That's not good. Oh, no, it's all right. Because I was on the ridge. There isn't anyone else up there. Now, what do you say we go down and get the Rusi? Good idea. I'm sorry if I've misjudged you. Ah, forget it. This is your game. I don't want to tell you how to play it. It's the game we are all in. Let's play it together. Should be light another hour. Then the snow I was talking about. They've got to cut the two pieces. There's a narrow climbing gorge that runs between them. I... What's the matter? They're coming up through here. Can we go by? Get a run? Can we make a run for it? No. is starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hailed production Border Incident will return in just a moment for the second act. Any woman who knows the great things that women have done in our nation's history knows that the work of the Women's Army Corps deserves a high place on the list. It's a great corps and proud of an already fine record. The women of the WAC, the Women's Army Corps, are again serving alongside the men of the United States Army doing interesting jobs, challenging jobs, work of vital importance in the support of your Army's combat soldiers. They're busy in technical fields, secretarial posts, and supplies in the most interesting places in the world. If you are a young woman between 18 and 34 and qualify, you can find a career of deeply satisfying service in the Women's Army Corps because your United States Army and the Women's Army Corps are growing rapidly today your chances for advancement are better than ever. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting stations. Learn all the facts today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of Border Incident. <laughs> I died. Any closer, and they'd have been standing on us. Let's all thank God it wasn't any life. When he yelled, Halt, I thought we were cooked. The question is, were they looking for us, or was it just a routine patrol? We'd better get out of here. We'll head northwest and try to pick up the river. All right, we'll rest here. Now, let's have a look at the map. 
See this range here? The way it slopes down to the west? Now, look there. That's the range. And beyond that lies both Sam Atkins. We met you, Jack. Yes, Sam, I'm right. Better find a good place to hold up. Temperature will go way down. Way down. Sky doesn't look very good. See this woodland across the valley? We'll make for there. Hey, what have you got there? It looks like a buckle. Might have come off a boot or a neck pack. I'd say we were getting warmer, gentlemen. Well, I guess you called it this time, Sandy, old pal. How long is it going to last? Three days. Better do this windbreak up higher. It'll be a bad night. I Hold don't... it. Okay, it's him. He's turning an awful hurry. Looks like trouble. We'd better get ready to run for it. Hey, come on. I knew those were footprints. Bring everything, hurry. A patrol? I think I found even a spot. Where? Is he all right? I don't know, but I follow the trail of thought. It leads to some cliffs on the edge of the timber line. There is a cave at the foot of one. I think he's in there. Come on. Listen. One way or the other, we've got to get in out of this. The cave is about 100 feet ahead. If we just walk in, he's apt to shoot and ask questions later. But he knows me. So I'll try to crawl up near the entrance and call to him. What is it is not even us. Well, who else could it be? Soldiers? Lost? Well, if so, what would be the point of trying to cover the trail? Well, they... they... Now, never mind. I'm not going to stand here and freeze. I'll go ahead. If anything goes wrong, clear out. You both got mad. With luck, you'll get over the border. If it is him, wait till I call you in. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Ivanov. Ivanov, it's Donner. Stefan Donner. I've come to help you. I am Donner, remember? Ivanov, the last time I saw you was at the concert in Kiev. Ivanov, I... I'm, I'm coming in. Even up. Can you see me? I am Donna. This is no trick. The only reason I found you is that Richard told me where to look. I've been following your trail from the peak south of Gori. Even up, I... All right, Helga. Where are you? I'm here, Donna. Helga. Yes, Father. Stay by the entrance. Oh, Donna. My daughter, Helga. <laughs> you need to talk to you. Thank you for your better judgment, madam. Thank my father, sir. Oh, Richard, send you. Hmm? Good of him. He's done well to find me. How did you do it? I thought we left no trace. A buckle was the first clue. When we struck the timber back at the foot of the mountain, I thought I found a footprint. And after that... Oh, never uh, mind, never mind. It's my fault. No, no, no. I had a fall down. I broke my ankle. We managed to reach you. Stupid on my part. Can't you make a light? I have a ship with No, me. no, no light. When you become a hunted animal... You must copy his actions if you wish to live. But you're free here. No, it's warm back in the cave and we're dressed for this. So they sent you to find me, huh? <laughs> well, now that you've found me, what are you going to do? Carry me over the mountains on your back? But don't you think that you were both very lucky I found you? Yes, I suppose we are. We're not very polite, are we? That's another thing that happens. When you become a hunted animal, you lose your manners. I didn't come alone, even. I've got two friends back there on the edge of the woods. I better call them in before they freeze. Three of you, huh? Better and better. All right, Donna, call them in. Helga, stand behind them. If it's a trick, you know what to do. Stop. <laughs> you know, when a man risks his life for another man, and the appreciation is as deep founded as this, it's really a touch. <laughs> that sounds more like Donna. But really, you can't blame her. Call your friends. If they're really friends, someday we may thank you. It was the only a day before they found out. Helga and I began our journey at once. We had good luck because it wasn't until two days later that we learned the truth. We heard the news as we left Tbilisi. But for this fall, we'd have been out long ago. Well, what made you pick an escape route through this part of the country? It's lousy with oil and truth. Just that. Only a fool would pick such a route, eh? Or a fox. Listen, if we're all so smart, let's hang a blanket over the cave entrance so we can have a fire. I would rather be uncomfortable than take the chance. 
A thoughtful risk is one thing. Unnecessary chances are another. We want a guard at the entrance all the time. I will release Kanovich at 10 o'clock. You two can get some sleep tonight. I'll spend my watch. You have the voice of a woman, certainly. Although you seem set on trying to make it sound like a man. I can't tell what you look like, but it wouldn't surprise me if you wore a beard. You'll do as I say, madam, and I say you'll sleep tonight. <laughs> Listen to the man sing. Helga, you'd better obey him or he'll take you over his knees. I'll take no orders from him. In this you will, my girl. We have three men to protect us. Let us do as he says and get the sleep we need. Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> How does it look? Even in this bad light, it doesn't look good. I'm not going to try and cut it. I think you clinted one of the bones. Oh, you did a job. I think the snow is letting up. All right, wake up the others. It's time we... Well, what are you staring at? Uh, you, uh, the, the, you don't have a beard. I hate to disappoint you. And under all the dirt and fur, you are very pretty. Some this. But I see your disposition hasn't improved any. How would you like to prepare some breakfast? There is food in that knapsack there. Prepare your own breakfast. You know what you need, honey. Westernizing. Take all the kinks out of you. <laughs> Get the breakfast, Helga. The sooner we start to climb this mountain, the sooner we can start this uh, westernizing. <laughs> How much further to the top? Not much. Oh. Make sure that rope is tight around you. Oh. You stay here with him, son of it. Oh. We'll pull him up from the ledge. Oh. Have to wait here till morning. We'll freeze. Build a snow blind. Lie together for warmth. What fun. Wake up. Come on. Luke. Mm. Luke, it's daylight. Mm. Oh, let me sleep. No, wake up, Luke. You, you turn to the others. I'll get him on his feet. Uh, thank the Lord you're still moving. We've got to get down up this mountain. Look how clear it is. The border runs somewhere across the plain below. Please. We can't go any farther. You, you've got to stop. Do you want to take the chance of stopping before we are safe? You have to carry him, Donner. Where the devil is this border? I don't know. They didn't mark it to the red line. All right, stop putting down. The rest of it. Well, here it comes your rear guard like a jackrabbit. What is it, son of a bitch? It's patrol headed this way. One of them on horseback. Headed toward us across the plain. Did they see you? No. How far away? A oh, mile, maybe. We'd better get up into those rocks. No, they will see us. Get the tent fixed. Make this place look like a camp. Check all of you. You got mine. Get the end of that there. When we are done, you three got to crawl up into those rocks. This is what we're trying to do. Oh! Oh! Who are you? What are you doing out here? I might ask you the same question. I can see that you don't respect boundaries. Boundaries? What the devil are you talking about? You are on foreign soil. It is very dangerous to be today on foreign soil without the express permission of those who own it. You don't have that permission. I suggest you get off quickly before trouble starts. <laughs> and who's going to start it, Mr. Big Mouth? You? <laughs> Sergeant! Captain! Hmm. That surprises you. What do you take us for, fools? Do you think a food defense and teacher of oil would come into such territory without protection? There is a platoon of men in those rocks up there. Unless you are willing to create an incident that might very well touch up a third world war, you'd better turn your troop around and get back in your own country. Seeking oil, huh? <laughs> Fine. That's what you're doing. Whatever we are doing, we are not answerable to you. Now, clear off. According to my map, a map approved by your government, the boundary cut through the center of this plain. Either turn your troop around and get out of here or suffer the consequences. Don't threaten me! Captain! Good day, camera. You have 30 seconds. 
You haven't heard the last of it. You fired on my men. Oops. Yeah. Oh. Well, Donna, you're incredible. Yeah, I am a little weak, thank you. Uh, uh, do you do you know if we are across the border? If we're not, we're very close to it. <laughs> At least you convince him. None of it is waiting. Safe to go on. Now let's go a long way this time. I, I'm sorry for the way I have acted. Thank you. Forgive me. <laughs> well, just proves it. He must be over the border. Calgary shot him to western eyes already. Come along. We'll all sleep in warm beds this night. We'll return with the word about next week's show in just a moment. Here's an urgent message to all registered nurses. This is a chance for you to be of vital service to your country and to yourself. The Army Nurse Corps has opportunities for you. You'll become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances, with excellent chances to further your career. You'll have the benefit of working with the finest medical equipment in the world. You'll learn the newest professional techniques in anesthesia, operating room procedure, nursing administration, and many, many others. So get all the facts today. You can do this by writing or wiring the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. That's the Surgeon General, United States Army, Washington 25, D.C. Do it now. <laughs> program on Cloudy We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Cloudy We Hail stars Paul Luther. Border Incident was written by DeWitt Scott. The music was composed and conducted by John Bunyan. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Luther. We cordially invite you to join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail. Our play is entitled Edge of the Curtain. Until then, goodbye.